HackerRank is a programming challenge and learning website, just like Code Wars. HackerRank has paths for Python, SQL, C++, Java, Regex, and general, and other things like Angular. Here's the problem, though. 30 Days of Code. 30 Days of Code is a general programming challenge where you can choose a language that isn't on the list, like C-sharp, for example. Here's an example of a C-sharp challenge I'm on. Day 2 is about operators. Keep in mind, operators themselves are super easy. So why haven't I solved this challenge in C-sharp yet? First, let's look at the description. As you can see, it's quite verbose. Three full paragraphs and one example at the bottom that uses a lot more text than it should to explain on what the user should do. To compare, let's look at Code Wars. Code Wars usually uses one paragraph, sometimes even one or two sentences, to explain what it wants. And then there's test cases, the examples, are put underneath where you type the code. On HackerRank, they decided to put basically everything in the description. But there's another problem, the code itself. First, let's look at the code given on Code Wars. As you can see, you're usually given the class and the function itself. Everything else is up to you. HackerRank, on the other hand, has this for C-sharp. 13 wasted lines calling namespaces that you'll most likely never use. I do use link and sometimes I'll use regular expressions for regex, but for challenges like this where it's just using operators, you don't need to call all these namespaces. Even when you scroll down to the main function, you'll see more crazy unnecessary code inside. This is why I have solved over 500 challenges on Code Wars, whereas Hacker Rank I've solved about like 30 different tasks, some in SQL, some in Python, a little bit of everything. Another thing that HackerRank has is certification, basically a place where you can test your skills and show employers, which I'll get to in a little bit, your skills. There's just one problem with these certifications. You only get one try. And I don't mean you fail and you have to wait six months. I mean you fail and that's it. You never can take a certification again for that topic. Now, as of this video, they do have a message saying we expect multiple attempts to be available soon, but so far none of the certifications that I've taken allow a retake. Now here's the good news. The first is that most companies, including Amazon, which I mentioned in my Amazon prep video, use HackerRank as a way to solve challenges they design. So it is a good idea to create a HackerRank account solely for that. The second thing, which is newer but still good, is that they have career fairs. As I view the page, they don't tell you what companies will be at the event, just how many. Again, it's not terrible, but it's a little annoying that I won't know who's there unless I register and wait till the day of. They actually do have a job board, which is nice, but incredibly limited when comparing it to Indeed or LinkedIn. For some reason, remote isn't an option to choose. So should you create a hacker rank account? The short answer is yes, for two main reasons. Other companies use HackerRank, so it makes sense to at least have one. The languages they support do offer some learning, so at least there's that. Plus it's free, so you don't have anything to lose. I usually go to HackerRank for a couple of reasons. I learned a new language and I want to test it out, although there's better options like Code Wars. I remember it exists and I want to see what they added, if anything. And again, another company wants to test your skills.